Welcome to The Gathering, a podcast for artists and creatives from Arts Lancashire. I'm Alex O'Toole and this is a special episode created in association with the RSC, Blackpool Grand Theatre and Northern Broadsides. It's a widely held opinion that Shakespeare may have first performed some of his most famous plays not in London, but Lancashire. In Elizabethan times, Lancashire was a much larger county than it is today, and it is believed that in his teenage years, Shakespeare came to live with relatives at Horton Tower near Preston, and later also at Rufford Old Hall in Rufford. It was there that a young William Shakespeare, or William Shakeshaft, as he is referred to in the will of his uncle Alexander Houghton, that Shakespeare began to write and perform. At the same time, a short distance away in Prescott, which was once part of Lancashire, was the only purpose-built indoor theatre outside of London. And it was there that the first ever performances of William Shakespeare's Richard III and Love's Labour's Lost are supposed to have taken place. Fast forward some four centuries, and Shakespeare's connection to the north of England is stronger than ever. And now, to mark the 400th anniversary of the publication of Shakespeare's first folio, the Royal Shakespeare Company have launched 37 plays, a national new playwriting project. In Lancashire, this is being led by Blackpool Grand Theatre, in association with Northern Broadsides, a theatre company from Halifax, the Old Electric in Blackpool, and the Lowther Pavilion Theatre in Lytham. In this special episode of The Gathering, I speak to the RSC's Head of National Partnerships, Robin Belfield, Blackpool Grand Theatre's Creative Learning Producer, Joe Cleesby, and Northern Broadside's Resident Director, Hallam Breen, to find out more about the opportunity, what the judges are looking for, and how Lancashire writers can get involved. Here's Robin. So I'm Robin Belfield. Uh, I'm the Head of National Partnerships at the Royal Shakespeare Company. Um, The Royal Shakespeare Company based in Stratford-upon-Avon. Shakespeare is our focus. Shakespeare is our main house playwright, if you like, but a real uh, drive to make um, Shakespeare's work live for uh, everyone, everyone and anyone. And that's what we're constantly striving to do. Um, So my role is looking at working with our national partnerships. So we work with a number of theatre partners across the country, Blackpool, uh, Grand Theatre in Blackpool being one of them, Um, uh, uh, everywhere up from um, Northern Stage up in Newcastle, Newcastle Theatre Royal, all the way down to Hall for Cornwall at the other end of the country. So my role is is working with our our colleagues in in those theatre partners and with our network of a school of schools that we call our associate schools, um, all of all of whom working together, collaborating on various different projects that make Shakespeare mean uh, mean something to young people and also to community groups via our Shakespeare Nation program as well. Um, people who might not have accessed Shakespeare ever, or people who might not have accessed Shakespeare since primary school. Um, however, recently. Uh, or current that 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 might be for them um, and our big drive is to make that first encounter that first moment of, of either learning about Shakespeare in school or coming back to to his work later on in life as a, a vivid um, exciting um, thrilling experience as possible so my work is all about working with our theatre partners and our school partners to make sure that um, uh, yeah those encounters with Shakespeare aren't just about sitting there reading and struggling with with these long words um, that we haven't heard for 400 years, um, but about living it, breathing it, thinking it, thinking about the choices to be made with the language, enjoying the language, um, hearing it. Um, So yeah, that's a bit about my work. Yeah, hearing it's really important, I think, isn't it? It's quite difficult to read if you're not reading it all the time, but hearing it makes a big difference. It really does. It really does. And 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 when you look back at, you know, the, the theatre that Shakespeare was writing for, it is all about listening. 
you know, back in, 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 in the 1600s, people talked about hearing a play, not seeing a play. We talk now about going to see a play, whereas back then they talked about going to hear a play. It's called an auditorium because it's the place where we listen. Um, uh, it was described that, uh, you know, as a circle of ears. Do you know what I mean? Uh, um, uh, uh, those sort of round playhouses just with, with lots of ears just focused on that. And we've lost that now. So, um, you know, we, we, we pay much more focus on reading, um, um, which wasn't as, as, as big a focus for, for Shakespeare until, and this might lead us nicely on, until the printing of the first folio, which is the first time uh, all of those plays are written down in a, in a collected, in a collected volume, which is a, a pioneering thing, you know, um, thinking about, um, you know, moving forward. Um, before that, it was the focus was on was on listening and hearing these words. And when that's what you've got, when you've got actors speaking and you've got audiences listening, you don't have the technology, you don't have lights and sound and visual, uh, you know, films and projection. You've just got words and you've got imagination. And, and do you know what I mean? The, the magic that happens in that space between the words leaving an actor's mouth and entering an audience's ears is, is something very special indeed. Yeah, absolutely. And you have led us very nicely on to <laughs> 37 plays. So can you tell us a little bit, what is 37 plays? So 37 plays is the RSC's um, sort of national playwriting project. Um, so 400 years ago in 1623, as I mentioned, Shakespeare's complete works, the 37 plays that he wrote, um, were compiled after his, his death, were compiled by his good friends and colleagues into a, into a compilation. Um, and as I say, that was something to be revered. You know, here is a, a playwright's lifetime, um, of, 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 of creativity. Um, uh, wrapped in a neat volume. Um, now, looking back at those plays, we think of those plays, they, they speak volumes about the human condition and lots of universal themes that, that um, speak to us all. But they also speak about his life and time. They also speak about the things that were important to him, power, corruption, um, uh, gender, and the interplay between men and women, um, or fathers and children, or mothers and children, you know, parents and families, and um, and how that worked within his world. Um, and so the 37 plays is saying, well, if we were to create the first folio for now, what would that look like? And how would we capture the 37 plays that spoke to um, our society, our culture now um, and the breadth and scale of what culture means in, uh, in, in Britain at the moment. Um, so it is an open invitation to get the nation writing. That's the basic premise that we want everyone and anyone, whether you've written plays before, whether they have been performed professionally or not, whether you are six years old starting to, to, to write and, 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 um, um, or whether you're, you know, um, in your senior years and you thought, oh, I've never done this before, but I fancy giving it a go, then this is the chance. Um, and we're, we're working with our, as I say, with our um, theatre partners across the country, so with theatres like The Grand in Blackpool, um, uh, to work with community groups, other theatre companies like Northern Broadsides, um, to kind of get together as how can we spread the word that's it. That's the main the main thing. How can we get as many people writing their story? And so I think it's really important to say this isn't a shakes a response to Shakespeare's work. What we're not asking for is for anyone to say, um, this is my version of Hamlet or this is my version of Romeo and Juliet. If that's what people want to write, great. But that's not our our um requirement. Our requirement is that people write the stories, their stories the stories of, of, of characters that they know or characters that they're inspired by or, or, or things about, you know, stories about their, where they live, you know, things of the stories that matter to them in, the, in, in our lives now. So our aim is that we have lots of plays submitted in different formats, different lengths, 
there's no minimum there's no maximum you know re requirements um that um we 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 gather together a huge range of, of different diverse uh plays in inverted commas um and then we will have the unenviable task of whittling those down to get 37 representative plays um that we can then put in a, in a digital version you know okay so it's going to be a digital version so I, that does sound unenviable why why is it important to capture these stories in this way from real people rather than you know professional playwrights who are doing this all the time well i think as i say i think it's not it's it's not about marking either it's not about saying this is a professional um um playwriting competition as you like or it's not a, not for um it, it's both it's it's going how can we throw a, a the net as wide as possible um and it not being about um it not being about whether you've done it done it before uh, and i think i think it's it's the the important thing is certainly after the, the the last few years that we've all that we've all been through we know that we're a, we're a, um we're people are made to tell stories right and i think we've all acknowledged that the stories that are heard loudest come from a small group um uh, of people and i think this is an this is a wonderful opportunity to kind of go no actually let's put front and center the voices and the stories that we don't always hear the voices and the stories that maybe most of us aren't aware of um we're trying and this is the work in progress to um, be flexible about the format in which these plays are submitted. That that you don't have to write a play with a traditional way of format that play that you might have seen a play once before in your life. Uh, if that's not the way you want to write your play, then so be it, and we welcome that. And I think that's a really exciting possibility. Shakespeare moved forward the art of playwriting and so we shouldn't be restricted by what we think i'm doing a funny quote things with my fingers um what we think a play should look like or should read like this is about you know a way of telling your story through um through character um and location and how you want to pr uh, present that is totally totally up to you I really like that. I really like that. I, th I really hope that that will appeal to such a wide range of people. So just to be clear, who can enter and also what sort of stories are you hoping to receive? Well, I think, well, who can enter is absolutely anyone. Um, the submission window is January next year. So we will open our porthole for, for you know, our online portal for, for, for submission. Um, so there is a limit in terms of um, uh, a, a, an age limit. If you're a young person um, wanting to write, it may be that a parent, guardian or teacher uh, is required to submit that for you just for, for data purposes and, and safeguarding purposes. But we really hope, and that's why a lot of the work that we're doing through our partners um, it, it is in school. So we really hope to receive um, uh, plays from um, uh, young people, uh, plays from older people, um, plays from the four nations and all the regions. So that's what we're hoping for. So I can't tell you what, what we, I don't know what the stories are that, that we're going to get in. And I, I'm, no one here is thinking, oh, I really hope we get a story about XXX. Um, uh, actually, what we hope is we hope that we get submissions from the breadth and length of the, of the nation that takes in um, the whole diversity of who we are living on this, these islands. And that's our real hope, that we're getting in plays from children. We're getting in plays from uh, our older generations. We're getting in plays from the wonderful range of cultural heritages and backgrounds of people that, that have lived in this, uh, in this country for years or people who have just arrived here. Um, that's, what we're, that's what we're hoping for.
Okay, brilliant. So what will what will happen to those 37 players that you do select and, and what will happen to the writers behind them? So the 37 plays uh, will live in a digital format. We, you know, again, we're, we're, we're trying to think if, if the, the, the printed book was the pioneering folio of the time, what would our 37 plays look like? And I think that is um, uh, still malleable at the moment because, again, it, it will depend to a certain degree on the format of plays that, that come in, how we, how we make that, that folio. But we also know that we are going to commit to um, a script in hand reading of all 37. Um, uh, and again, that won't just be at the RSC in Stratford, but there will be uh, some of those will take place in Blackpool, in Newcastle, in Nottingham, in Truro, um, in, in all our different, in Bradford, in all our different um, partners around the, around the country um, as well. So that will be the kind of uh, the, the culmination of that, the celebration of the work. And then what happens then? Well, again, we're, we're, we're working with our partners to, to, to see what the um, legacy of the project is. You know, hopefully um, the Grand Theatre in Blackpool would be able to say, look, there is a host of plays that have come from Lancashire. We haven't been able to select them all, but here they are. Let's put these writers in touch with the Grand um, and Northern Broadside and say, look, the, 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 there's such stories here to be told. Um, we realise that our output is limited to 37, but actually there's no reason why, why the legacy can't, can't, can't live. And I think it's that making those connections um, through our partners, through our schools, with writers, uh, again, writers who are experienced, writers who uh, may be just finding out that they are... Um, that they have a skill and a talent for this for this work or just having a go oh, um, that sounds really fantastic and the fact that there's, there's possibly two two opportunities there for potential writers if they don't get selected for the 37 there could be you know future possibilities for their work um as well so just one last question is if uh, if you if you're selected um, are you wanting the writer to read that script in hand or record their play or will you bring in actors to do that? No, we'll bring in actors to do that. So again, a, a, a sense about um, cherishing the writer's role as writer um, and, and, and allowing them to be part of that process, um, working with a director um, a, a, and actors to bring that stage reading to life. And I think that's, that's really important for a writer to hear their own words. It's very difficult. And we've done this actually, we did, um, we did some initial workshops with, with, with the Grand and we brought in actors with us. Um, so we worked with a brilliant um, uh, group um, uh, on the Blackpool, uh, on the Grand stage. Um, and we just did some initial writing activities um, with a wonderful um, writer called Jack Holden. Um, and, from that workshop, um, uh, the participants started to write monologues. And again, it's that important step of then handing that over to an actor to read that. Again, we go back to that sense of hearing what it sounds like, that, that those words need to exist not on a page, but in a voice, in the air, in our ears, um, in space. Um, so that will be an important part. So we'll work with our theatre partners in terms of uh, how we produce those those script in hand performances. But that is essentially we would we would get a company of actors or, or, or companies of actors around the country to read read those works out out loud. That's brilliant. That that's so exciting for for someone who who may be producing work for the first time and to have it read by someone else. It just sort of lends yeah. that sort of that wonderful credibility um and and objectivity as well doesn't it so oh yeah. I'm, I, I just think it sounds brilliant and i hope you know the other the other part of it is that we hope to film them so you know of course it wouldn't be possible if you live in um blackpool say uh you might go and see the, the script in hand readings for, for for those few plays but actually our intention is to film all of them so again uh we can have this this a, a digital place where people could um you know download stream those performances uh so you w it would be possible for you to um if you're keen and to see the full 37 um play. Oh, fantastic 
yeah I can see people wanting to do that to sort of make it maybe a bit of a daily ritual for a month or something like that yeah that would be great thank you very much Robin that's brilliant you've given us a really good uh, overview there of of everything that people will need to know and of course people can find more information at the 37 plays website which i will link to in the show notes there's lots of resources lots of videos there's our podcast um there's packs loads of resources there to help anyone um especially if you're unfamiliar with playwriting or nervous about getting started there's loads of resources there to help you out so what if you are new to playwriting or you're nervous about putting your work out there as Robin said, you can find lots of resources to help you on the 37 Plays website, which I've linked in the show notes. But what if you need a little bit more support? Blackpool Grand Theatre has spent much of this autumn hosting playwriting workshops and scratch nights around the county to help people get their ideas onto paper and develop them. But as Joe Cleesby, creative learning producer at the Grand, told me, the support doesn't stop there. I'm Jo Cleesby and I'm a creative learning producer at Blackpool Grand Theatre. I am sure many people are familiar with the fabulous programme of shows we have on the Grand Theatre stage from drama, music, comedy um, and of course the infamous, infamous pantomime we have each year. Um, but people might not be quite as familiar with the work that we do in creative learning, which is very much working with community participants, community groups. We run holiday clubs for our children in Blackpool and um, a lot of work done with local schools across Blackpool, Fylde and Wire and my main role at the theatre for the last 10 years has been leading on our partnership work with the Royal Shakespeare Company um, as Robin mentioned doing Shakespeare Nation with adult participants and then with our associate schools of which we've got 20 schools, uh, primary, secondaries and special needs schools across Blackpool, Fylde and Wire. Yeah, I know you've been working with the RSC for a long time, haven't you? Yeah, definitely. I mean, that partnership is completely embedded in the work we do and my role. And it's brilliant when we get the touring shows as well. There's loads of exciting things that that RSC partnership has brought. So Blackpool Grand are one of 12 partner theatres across the country. What have you been doing to get people involved in the 37 Plays initiative so far? Yeah, so my ambition of 37 Plays is that we have as many submissions from Blackpool as possible um, and that we certainly have some of our plays selected on that final 37 cut. So it's really about finding those opportunities for local people to be inspired to write. Um, as you know, we're a receiving house at Blackpool Grand Theatre, so we don't have playwrights on hand. Um, so it was really about finding a partner of who could work with us um, to deliver those workshops and those initial tasters into having a go at writing. And it was very fortuitous that at the moment I was uh, looking for that partnership. Um, Northern Broadsides were advertising some playwriting courses they were doing for young people that was uh, Arts Council England funded. And so I sort of made a phone call and hey presto, that partnership was born um, and that's been fantastic because um, Helen Breen who's actually delivering those workshops from Northern Broadsides is actually lives in St Anne's so he's incredibly local to the Northwest um, so that's been fantastic so those initial taster workshops have taken place um, again it was about going back into the community if somebody's going to try something and test something for the first time we didn't want them to have to make that brave step of coming through the theatre doors to do that so those initial taster workshops have happened in um, Fylde in Lowther Pavilion, we had a central one here in Blackpool at the Electric Sunshine Project at the Old Electric and Fleetwood Libraries and it was very much about using those different partner venues as well to get people interested in writing and having a go um, and online as well so that if anybody's got any access needs they'll be able to do an online workshop which will um, be a way of having that same information in your own home. Brilliant. And so where can people find out about those online workshops? Yeah, so everything will be going on our website and obviously on our social media. Um, but if anybody wants to send an email to creativelearning at blackpoolgrand.co.uk, then we can respond to those emails with all the dates and the details of things that are coming up. Playwriting or writing of any kind is quite a solitary thing to do, but Shakespeare didn't always write his plays alone, did he? He did a lot of collaborative um 
working on plays. And I always kind of think of him like like the sort of Hollyoaks style writers team that there's sort of something similar going on back when when Shakespeare was writing his plays initially. Yeah, and I very much imagine that will be the kind of thing that will happen in our schools. Um, so as we said, um, a lot of our work happens with our associate schools across Blackpool, Valdemar, and Callum's been in residency for two weeks for all our schools, running workshops for them. And there is an opportunity that young people, teachers, and community groups can actually enter a collaborative piece. It doesn't have to be an individual uh, writer, people can work together and collaborate to write their piece together. As Jo just mentioned, Blackpool Grand Theatre had been working with Hallam Breen, resident director at Northern Broadsides on the 37 Plays project. I asked Hallam to share some information about his role as a playwriting mentor and to provide some top tips to help you write the winning play. My name's Hallam. I am a theatre director and a playwright, and I am also a resident director at Northern Broadsides. So I'm wearing a lot of hats in this project, all wonderful. Um, but Northern Broadsides is a national touring theatre company, and we are based in Halifax, West Yorkshire. And the company was really founded out of a frustration from some Northern actors and artists about the kind of roles that they felt that they were getting in big classical plays and texts like Macbeth, like Julius Caesar, like King Lear. Um, they felt that they were always, because they were Northern basically, having to play the funny bit role, the bit on the side, making people laugh but of no real consequence. So the company was really born out of the belief that no, people with Northern accents and from Hull and Newcastle and Liverpool can be kings and they can be emperors and they can be queens. Uh, so it was kind of a response to that really. And over the last 30 years, we've been producing uh, mid-scale tours with large casts of Northern actors with a variety of Northern accents and taking classic plays all around the country. As resident director there, I do a variety of things. So I've been looking after the show on the road, uh, but also I, um, do a lot of community work now on this side of the year. So co-running uh, a writer's group for people seeking asylum, uh, running a developing writer's scheme with emerging writers from across the North and just whatever else people come to us and say, we want workshops, we'd love to do some arts uh, activity. I kind of help facilitate that. So what is Northern Broadside's role within 37 plays and specifically with, with the Grand at Blackpool? Yes. So it was kind of kind of a happy accident, really. Uh, we've, over the last few years at Broadsides, been really keen in not just producing those classical plays with those Northern voices, but finding the Northern voices of today and finding out what uh, our communities want to say about the world. So we set up a scheme called the Young Writers Forge, which is all about connecting with emerging writers, 18 to 25, from across the North and giving them the tools to write a play and to have the chance to have a short play R&D with professional actors. And we got in touch with the Blackpool brand just to say, hello, we do this scheme. Could you tell some people about this scheme? And then as Joe so brilliantly said, just fired through an email and said, we, we have another scheme we'd love you to be involved with. Uh, so we came on board and we're just delivering workshops around playwriting as an introduction to people who maybe have never thought they could write a play before to just dip their toes in the water and go, oh, actually, it's not scary. It can shockingly be quite fun. And you've, and you've done some of those already, haven't you? How's it gone so far? It's been really, really great, actually, just to see people turn up feeling very, very shy and uh, with sort of stuck within themselves, thinking they can't do it, but going, the willingness to show up, I think, has been really fabulous. And we've had people come out with some really fantastic seen some really original ways of thinking about the world and um, some really just profound thinking as well kind of thing that people are maybe reticent to share in their everyday lives they feel like through the process of writing and creating something artistic they can kind of tap into that vulnerability which otherwise they may not feel they can so it's really really rewarding to be in the room as people have made these discoveries can totally see that some of those big ideas that they might be thinking about in their heads but not really have a platform to to talk about them or articulate them in any way so yeah brilliant so how did you yourself get into writing plays and directing plays uh, I, I think I did what quite a lot of 
I was an English student, and I think it's what a lot of English students end up doing. Uh, so I was a big drama kid growing up and then went to university thinking I was an actor, met people who were much better at acting than I was, so I thought I'm not an actor. Uh, <laughs> so kind of fell into the directing and the writing side of things at uni. And then when it came to coming out of uni, I knew I wanted to work in theatre, but there were not kind of the opportunities around that I would have liked. So I thought, okay, well, I'll just create my own opportunity. So I uh, ended up co-writing a play for the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, which we took up. It was received quite well, he says in all modesty. Um, <laughs> and we just kind of took it from there, wrote a few more plays, carried on directing those, and have just kind of, by hook or by crook, developed ourselves as freelance artists and here I am now telling other people about how to write plays, which feels very surreal, but brilliant and fantastic. Well, that leads nicely on to what would you say your sort of top, top three tips are for playwriting, people who want to enter this competition? Yeah, so my first tip would be to write something that means something to you, something that really uh, gets your heart racing and gets that fire burning in your stomach. And don't worry about trying to be clever or trying to be funny or trying to write something that feels worthy. If it is those things for you, that will come across in your writing. So just trust your gut and your passion. Uh, my next tip would be to know that you are a creative person, even if you think that you are not. Uh, I've seen that for the last week, people come and going, oh, I've worked in the prison service for 30 years. I, I can't write. And then they come up with these beautiful poetic ideas and sentences and scenes. So just trust yourself that you can do it. And I think my third tip, and it's maybe going to make Robin's job a bit harder when it comes to directing, is just to kind of go for it. Don't worry about writing the small, tiny thing. I always think it's great to go. If you want to put a scene in with tap dancing cockroaches, write the scene with tap dancing cockroaches. I'm getting thumbs up from Robin, so that's good. Uh, <laughs> just be bold, be creative, write the story that you want to write. And if it's a small kitchen sink drama, fine. But if you want a fountain emerging from the ceiling, have a fountain emerge from the ceiling. Those are some really good tips. I mean, it sounds like you have had some, you know, real diverse people coming to the sessions already. So, I, I mean, it sounds like that you're going to get some really interesting different stories yeah I hope so and people have been really open about their journeys into that room and there's people have come from such different life experiences and are bringing such different experiences into the room with them and sharing them in really beautiful ways uh, so I'm just I'm excited to see what people end up producing and what those final 37 are I am so it's between now and the deadline is January is that right Robin uh, yes, yeah, so the submissions window is January next year, January 23. So we'll open that window at the beginning of the month and then it will remain open. So you've got the, you've got the month to submit your play, but don't wait. Don't wait till January. Get, get writing now. I think that's, that's the, you know, these things take time, but totally echo, um, what Helen was saying. I think if I don't see a play, read a play with tap dancing cockroaches, I'm going to be disappointed, quite frankly. <laughs> Um, uh, uh, okay so someone's got to do it someone's got to do it please let it be you come on we're ready <laughs> come on let's have someone from Blackpool writing a play about tap dancing cockroaches thanks for listening to The Gathering if you like this episode let us know in the reviews and don't forget to share it with your friends for show notes links to all the organisations and initiatives mentioned in this episode and much more head over to www.artslancashire.org.uk slash thegathering. You can also follow us on Twitter at Arts Lancashire.